what's up, you guys? I'm going to teach you how to play that turnaround, teach you where to put it, and we're going to have a lot of fun doing so. Let's zoom in and let's lock it. Okay, so basically what this turnaround is, is it's going from the fifth fret on the E string. We're going to play that twice with my middle finger, my second finger. I'm going to the A string, fourth fret, twice. I'm going to use my middle finger for the fifth fret A string, twice. Slide that middle finger up to the sixth fret A string, twice. So, so far we have. So everything's been in pairs, and now what we're going to go to is just one note here on the E. That's going to be on the seventh fret A string, so. And then the easy way is to simply go up a half step to the F here, so I'm on the 8th fret, and come back to the 7th. So the easy way is... The harder way is to actually do a little, what's called a dominant 7 shape. And so we're going to go, same thing, 5, 5, A string, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7. And then I go up and I play that 8th fret on the A string. I play the seventh fret D string, and I play the eighth fret on the G string. I'm gonna play those three and bring it down. The whole shape just slides down. So that like uh, this turnaround looks like this. That sounds pretty cool. And so practice that. Get that comfortable. I specifically am having you use your middle finger for a lot of these notes here on the A string because because of this shape, it's easiest whenever you've already got this in place. So that's a huge tip. A lot of my uh, students like to kind of go above and beyond and try to, you know, use all their fingers, which is great, but then it kind of leaves you stuck here to, uh, you gotta switch it around, which is fine, but I would recommend middle, or index, or I'm sorry, uh, second finger, first finger, second, 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 second. Makes everything much easier. And now, what the heck do I do with this thing? Where do I place it? Well, there's a couple ways that you can uh, use this in a blues progression. By the way, if you haven't seen that video, um, it, it is uh, linked just up above uh, and down below as well. Uh, there's two videos I have on playing blues in A, so make sure you watch those. And what I want you to do is I want you to take into account where the 11th and 12th measure is. So. The 12 bar blues is called 12 bars because there's a total of 12 bars. Now, the last two bars, um, I'm sorry, the ninth and 10th bar are gonna be this. It's gonna be an E. Jump to a D, so this is measure 10. Now on a measure 11, instead of playing A here, we're gonna go to this A. play that full speed. And you're back to the one. Right? So that specifically starts on measure 11, runs through 11, through 12, and then it starts you right back around to the one. Okay? Keeping in mind, there's a little rest, there's a little break after I get back to my E7 is what this is, by the way. So, so it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three, right? And so you want to wait for that. I kind of messed up that count, but you get right. So rest. That might be the easiest way to think about it. Okay, and that's it. That's the turnaround. That's where it's commonly placed. It's a lot cooler than just playing the, you know, the last four bars, which would be this. Right? That's what is happening underneath all of that turnaround, which is kind of interesting. Now, a little bonus tip, that turnaround can also be placed in the very beginning of a song as well. You can do this, okay? We're just kind of hanging out, me and the boys are ready to rock and roll, let's go. And we count it in. One, two, here we go.
right? And it kind of kicks off the song. So it can actually be used as an intro as well, which is really cool and really clever. Great way to really kind of like bring the band in. And then lastly, you can also change this thing up at the very end to end the entire song. This is, again, a, an additional bonus tip. I actually wasn't planning on doing this, but since we're here, if you're watching, I'll show it to you. So if I'm doing this, this is really an E, an E7 with a C shape. Okay? It's that chord. That's my five chord in the A, in the key of A. Okay? So that's fine, and that kind of gives me tension to go back to the one. Now, if I want to end the song with this, I'll simply adjust a little bit. Instead of this, I'll go like this. Right? So now I'm playing an A7. Or I can just do the, you know, the one. So here's the easy way. Same thing. And I just brought my first finger, I played six, five on the E string. Kind of cool, right? And that ends the song. So here, would it, here is what it would be with a full, like, actual bar chord, which are, you know, those are difficult, but here it is. Five, four, four, five, five, six, seven. Uh, and then, yeah. And then these two start. Isn't that nice? And that is how you could end a song uh, and with a little bit of uh, pizzazz. Hope you guys liked that video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.